joined now by Jerry White Jr. He is the festival director of the Vidlings and Tapeheads Film Festival that will be coming up on October 22nd and 23rd in Hamtramck. And he joins us now on the Megacast. Jerry, thanks for being with us. Good morning. Happy to be here. Happy to have you with us. Tell us a little bit about the Vidlings and Tapeheads Film Festival. So Vidlings and Tapeheads, we're in our fourth year, uh, and this is an unconventional storytelling film festival. So we do have a lot of uh, weird and eclectic shorts, but that weirdness um, and idiosyncrasy uh, is always funneled through uh, storytelling and narrative. So it's uh, these aren't short films that are just uh, brightly colored light uh, visual wallpaper. These are telling stories. They're just doing it in an unconventional way. Uh, 15 minutes and under, we have uh, made in Michigan film blocks, animation, uh, documentary, and fiction, and sprinkled throughout the weekend also uh, is live music. We're joined by Jerry, uh, Jerry White Jr. He is the festival director of the Vidlings and Tapeheads Film Festival. So you mentioned the music also. There will be uh, some music at their uh, kickoff event as well. Uh, and so will the, will the music also be kind of experimental and avant-garde like the films, or is that going to be more? There is that, yes. This is, uh, it, it's not um, radio pop necessarily, although I wouldn't turn that down. Uh, but these are all um, local acts as well. Um, it's really important to me to showcase, uh, you know, local films and local music, as well as the films from around the world, and expose, you know, our visiting filmmakers that are coming from all over to the Michigan art scene. And so, Jerry, what makes these styles of films, the films that have a little bit more weirdness to them, uh, a little more avant-garde, what makes them stand out? Uh, in, in or this film festival featuring these kinds of movies stand out differently from other film festivals in the local area? Um, well, a big part of it for me is, um, you know, when talking about unconventional cinema, um, that can co come about in a lot of different ways. One, it can be, you know, tell me a story uh, that I've never heard before, um, but it, or it's tell me a story I've heard in a way that I've never heard it before. And that can be done through cinema, you know, cinematography or, or different um, filmmaking techniques, but it can also be used with uh, representation. So any films with a lot of queer representation, people of color, that's something, um, again, you're telling stories that maybe just have not been told a million times before. And so uh, you mentioned some of those reasons uh, in, in that answer, but why should people uh, if they're not used to viewing these kinds of films or viewing these styles of films, why should people that are that enjoy movies, that enjoy going to the cinema, uh, enjoy local filmmaking, why should they ultimately be uh, interested in seeing some of these films and watching some of these more experimental styles? That's a great question. Um, you know, there's the idea that um, avant-garde or different cinema is almost like a, um, medicine that you have to take sometimes like it's eat your vegetables and it's not going to be that fun but it's going to be good for you um but i would say that our film festival is that medicine but it's also really entertaining um through you know when when a film is really slow and long and when it's over you're like what was that even about that's not the kind of films that we're screening um you know i can have an appreciation for that kind of art house cinema but there is a core of narrative storytelling so even if you're going on a weird ride when you're off that ride you're going to know why you're on it and i think that that's a really valuable experience we're joined by jerry white jr he is the festival director for the vidlings and tapeheads Film Festival, which will be in Hamtramck on October 22nd and 23rd. Uh, October 24th will cap off the weekend with a filmmaker and VIP-only awards ceremony, brunch, and excursion. They have a kickoff party as well on opening night on the 22nd. Uh, they'll feature live music as well as other uh, interesting events as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about what people can expect if they go out on the first night of the film festival for the kickoff party as well. Yeah, Friday night's really exciting. So we're doing a best of screening of uh, prior previous um, or previous uh, Vidlings and Tapehead shorts. So these are both like um, there's comedy, but there's also some spooky stuff to really fit the vibe of October. So 8 p.m. Uh, is when that launches, and it's about 80 minutes of just like some of the best shorts that we've ever had at the fest before. And after that, again, we are back in real life at a live event, 
And you know, watching your previous uh, programming um, talking about COVID, this is something that Ant Hall, our venue, takes really seriously. So only folks that have been vaccinated will be admitted uh, with the requirement to show vaccination proof and will be wearing masks inside. So we take this really seriously. We really want to get back in person and share live events, but we're going to be doing it safely. So it's been a tough go of it over the past couple of years for uh, filmmakers, especially independent filmmakers who are often the ones that are uh, submitting their films to festivals like this. Uh, and being that we're coming off of those two years where there's been a lot of time for some of these artists to consider to reconsider their art, to come up with new projects, how excited should people be to see these films at this festival this year? Uh, that's a great question too, because I have attended, I, I've, uh, I'm a filmmaker as well. I've programmed for other film festivals over the years, and I've attended some of the uh, Zoom film festivals that these big fests have put on, uh, as well as regional. And look, I get it, like Zoom festivals are better than nothing, but man, they're only slightly better than nothing. Uh, they are, it's just tough because we're in front of our computers all the time. We're watching content all the time on our laptops and our phones. So to watch a, you know, a string of films, short films, also on the same computer, it's really rough. And then you're missing the like talking to people in real life. So I really, it really re, um, reinformed for me and emphasized what's so special about a live event. Um, like, yes, these films have already been made, they're already recorded, but it's the experience of watching it with other people. It's the experience of watching that live Q&A with the filmmaker and then having a drink with them afterward and like eating some pizza with them afterward. So I think it's really exciting to be able to be back. Um, we're social creatures. And again, I've been able to keep connections with friends through Zoom over the pandemic. So I'm very uh, thankful for what that can do. But that tool is not something we can apply to every aspect of our lives. We need that in-person connection. We're joined by Jerry White Jr. He is the festival director of the Vidlings and Tapeheads Film Festival. That is coming up October 22nd, 23rd, and 24th in Hamtramck. Uh, the, film, the main events will take place at Planet Ann Hall, and it's adjoining Ghost Light Bar in Hamtramck. Uh, and that again, October 22nd, October 23rd, and October 24th, which on the 24th includes a, uh, a weekend with a filmmaker and a VIP-only awards ceremony, brunch, and excursion as well. And so, uh, Jerry, what are some of the films that uh, people should be excited to see when they come to the festival this year? Uh, on your short list, what are some that you would suggest if people do attend this oh. event that they view? <laughs> That's so tough. We, we have 38 short films, and we've done something uh, different this year that we haven't done before. Um, I mentioned earlier the four categories, Made in Michigan, Animation, Documentary, and Fiction. And what we've done, like many film festivals, is screen those as discrete blocks of films. Uh, you know, so at 12.30, you have Made in Michigan, et cetera, et cetera. Well, this year, we have basically made mixtapes. So we still have four blocks, but every block has a little bit of a mix of everything. Um, and including with that, uh, there's like some themes that like surprisingly came up. So I, first of all, can't say which block to recommend because they're all great. They all have something really special in them. And as far as films that stand out, oh, that is so, that is like picking your favorite child. <laughs> um, you know, there's a film that I, I saw um, at Slam Dance, um, and I was programming for Slam Dance, and it's an animated documentary called Umbilical. Um, and that is something that I've seen many times now, um, and I'm really happy that we have it in our fest as well. And that was like really powerful and moving. Um, but honestly, yeah, like to get selected in our festival, you already have to go through all these rounds of programming. So everything that we're playing is something that we have like watched multiple times, thought deeply about, discussed. So yeah, they're all my favorite. <laughs> 
We're joined by Derek, uh, sorry, we're joined by Jerry White Jr. Jerry White Jr. is the festival director of the Vidlings and Tapeheads Film Festival that will be on October 22nd and 23rd, as well as the 24th in Hamtramck at places such as the Planet Ann Hall and the joining Ghost, Ghost Light Bar in Hamtramck. And so, uh, Jerry, for people that are interested in this, uh, where can they find more information, learn more about some of the films that they may be able to see in some of those blocks, and ultimately uh, get tickets to attend the event as well? Yeah, uh, so our website, vidlingsandtapeheads.com. Uh, vidlings is a word that you may not have heard before uh, because I may have coined it. Um, <laughs> and it's like the word video and the word earthlings. So V-I-D-L-I-N-G-S, vidlings and tapeheads. Uh, you can also Google it and our website will come right up. We have the schedule already posted. So if you're cur curious about the blocks and the themes that you know come up, if you're curious about the bands, all of that's in there, all the information, uh, and also ticket links. And you can get, um, it's $5, like we keep this, you know, um, punk rock, old school, I want people to attend. So attending a film block is five bucks. Getting a pass for the entire, uh, all four of them is 20, uh, which also gets you access to all of the live music. Uh, and then for a little bit more, you can get a VIP pass, which uh, gives you super secret special access to Saturday's or Sunday's brunch um, and our excursion. You get to hang out with the filmmakers and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, all of those links are on the website, uh, easy to find. We're joined by Jerry White Jr. He is the festival director of the Vidlings and Tapeheads Film Festival. As Jerry said, learn more information by going to Vidlings and Tapeheads Film Festival. Uh, dot com. That's vidlings and tapeheads dot com. Um, and so, uh, Jerry, you mentioned that you coined the term vidlings, but for people that aren't familiar, well, what's a tapehead? Yeah, well, tapehead has that. That actually has quite a bit of a um, history. Uh, There's a great movie in the uh, cult film uh, in the '80s called Tapeheads, uh, and I actually ended up meeting that director out in LA randomly. Um, but a tapehead is someone who is really passionate about. Um, you know, analog media, whether it's cassette tapes or videotapes. And I have definitely uh, come up in the VHS area era, and I'm a bit of a tape head myself. And so while our festival is not a VHS <laughs> film festival, uh, I do have an appreciation for analog media. And if uh, we have no boundaries on the type of um, things that can be submitted. So if you made a, a film and it's compelling and you did it with your cell phone or you did it with your old vhs camera great like that gives again a different type of experience so i think the tape heads in the title uh alludes to a bit of the cult uh cinema aspect of our fest we're joined by jerry white jr he is the festival director of the vidlings and tape heads film festival joining us on the mega cast at festival running october 22nd through 24th in hamtramck and uh jerry we have we've we've had over the years a, a really a really interesting independent uh, film film community here in the in the state of Michigan. We got a lot of great filmmakers across the state. Uh, for those that are into more more of the films al along the lines of what we see at the Vidlings and Tapeheads Festival, how has their resurgence after the COVID nineteen pandemic or the bulk of the pandemic? How has that been for them? Because for most filmmakers in the state, it was really a time of struggle and coming back out of the pandemic on independent films and on yeah. um, non studio films as well that were that we're filming in Michigan, it, it's been a really tough go of it and, and an intricate go of it uh, coming back. For sure, and uh, I live in LA, and, and so seeing the way that the um, you know industry's been impacted there as well, yeah. uh, there's a lot of parallels. What I would say is with um, my experience in short film, at least, um, short film has been able, and, and especially short experimental um, or you know less conventional works have been able to dodge uh, some of the worst impacts of this because, you know, as soon as you have any kind of uh, feature uh, film with any reasonable, decent budget, uh, you now have a crew. You know, you have camera and camera assist and sound and uh, assistant directors. And now in a COVID era, you just can't really do that safely. When you're doing a short film, you could do it by yourself you know you can uh we have one uh film in our fest that is told through zoom and it's very much a uh pandemic era type of story um and and i don't think i would want to watch a feature 
that's all told well actually you know what if it's if it's good i would <laughs> but uh yeah i think that uh filmmakers in michigan and you know overall have found really creative solutions uh just making maybe a smaller more intimate personal piece shooting things in segments uh and then stitching it together to continue to be creative and um prolific even in the pandemic era I'm joined by Jerry White Jr., the festival director of the Vidlings and Tapeheads Film Festival, uh, happening October 22nd through 24th in Hamtramck. Uh, the main shows, main events will be at Planet and Hall, and it's adjoining uh, Ghost Light Bar in Hamtramck. Jerry, just another minute or so before we'll say goodbye. Anything else that people should know before they head out to the Vidlings and Tapeheads Film Festival? Uh, well, Ant Hall, you know, if, if you've never been there, I mean, you're, you're missing out. It is an amazing venue. Uh, they've been partnered with us since the beginning, and it's actually, you know, multiple venues inside. Um, and, you know, they have a comedy club, the, the stage um, for the main Ant Hall, you know, with the screen and the seating. It's just a really great place, really cozy, really safe, like, Honestly, a loving environment. I just love the guys that run that. And um, yeah, and Saturday, uh, I shout out to one of our sponsors, Amici's Pizza has been sponsoring us from the get-go. And we have this uh, lunch, uh, you know, late lunch on uh, Saturday. And the pizza's free. You don't even have to have a ticket uh, to eat free pizza. So come hang out with us, eat pizza, and then, you know, maybe buy a ticket or two and watch some of the films. You can learn more information and buy your tickets at vidlingsandtapeheads.com. Jerry, thanks. Thank you so much.